hello friends and happy Thursday. I hope you enjoyed your week off from me and enjoyed Thanksgiving in a really great way. And for a lot of people, they think real estate's just dead at the end of the year. Well, spoiler alert, houses are bought and sold all year long. There are, however, more opportunities for those of y'all that get up and work every day, but that's just a life skill. So let's just make that a little standalone moment. Lee Brown says, work and Shazam, things might actually happen. All right, so question number one, and for the record, if you have a question, send it through the DMs or send it in the comments, no big deal. This one's from Kelly with a very personal question, and I feel you, sister. She says, when is it okay to leave your broker? Now, I'm gonna say this as a broker, I hope most of my agents never leave me, but there are times when I love watching them leave, and it's not because they're deadbeats. It's because sometimes, there's a better fit somewhere else. Sometimes somebody has to grow. Sometimes they wanna be in a different geographical area. Maybe the office offers something different. Maybe it's a personality fit. Nothing makes me happier as a broker than watching an agent go somewhere else, find their home and thrive in a way that they just weren't thriving as much with me. And so that's the grown-up approach is knowing people leave for good reasons. But as an agent, when you're looking at that broker, I want you to flip that around and say, am I getting the training I want Am I in an environment that has a culture that fits my personality? One of the cool things about real estate is that with 1.6 million agents in the country, there's truly a fit for everybody. And it might take you three brokerages before you find the right fit. And that could be because of the specialization. If you're a residential broker, you wanna be with a residential broker. If you're a commercial, be with a commercial person. Land with land or commercial people. Property managers, hang with property managers. If you are doing a specialty and the office is something else, that could be good. Maybe you're running a separate division, but it could also mean you don't have cohorts in a culture that makes sense. I'll also make it really easy for you. If, when answering your phone, you don't feel comfortable saying, hey, this is Lee Brown with One Community, then maybe you should change brokerages. I have run into a lot of agents that say, oh, I don't wanna say what firm I'm with. If you don't wanna say with whom you are affiliated, move it along. Now this is of course the time of year when a lot of brokers change offices because they're looking for something different. So I would ask you to figure out before you start jumping around, what makes sense to you. If you're chasing money, I need you to stop and figure out what causes the money to come into your pocket. Because if an agent comes to my office and the number one thing they need is money, I don't want them as an agent because that tells me they're gonna be tempted to go astray when they're working with buyers and sellers. I need to know that the agents who work in my firm have our neighbor's best interest at heart and they know the money will find its way to them later if they're focused on the best possible outcomes and they're focused on excellence. You might also be a technology driven agent and you need to be with a broker who either wants you to come in and help the brokerage move or who feeds that side of you. If you're an agent who's old school and you want to be with an old school broker, they're out there too. As far as other things that make it okay to leave your broker, I want you to think about the reputation in the marketplace. So what do your neighbors think when you say you're with a specific firm? Do they have generally positive things to say? Do they think you're a bunch of snakes, thieves, and liars? Do they think you're a bunch of money grubbers? Do they think you give back and you do wonderful things, you give great advice? Maybe, just maybe take off your name tag or your RPAC pin and go out to the grocery store and just ask people what they think. You'd be surprised how many of our neighbors have an opinion about brokerages and the way that they feel about it could impact the way that you feel about it. The biggest thing I will tell you is if you feel it's time to leave, it's probably time to leave. So go do some interviews and look for a good culture, a good fit, and trust your instincts. Okay, second question. With the holidays approaching, how can I set boundaries with my clients so I'm not doing show-ins on Christmas Eve? All right, friends, this is a lifelong thing and a year-long thing. It's not really restricted to the holidays. You run a business in real estate. You are a micro-entrepreneur. You need to treat your calendar like you're a micro-entrepreneur, like you're a CEO. If you don't like your bottle of ketchup, I doubt you are calling looking for Mr. Hines. I don't think anybody is. In fact, if they are, they might be perceived as a little bit crazy. So the biggest thing is we don't have an expectation that we can get Mr. Hines on the phone. You need to let your clients know that there's an expectation that you have things to do. So if Christmas Eve is when your family gathers and they come to your house, so you've got to clean up and you've got to cook or you've got to arrange for the catering, or you've got to clean off the countertop for the potluck, however you do the holidays, let people know. 
hey, I am not going to be available on December 24th. I will be with my family. And then make sure you've got a backup plan. There's got to be an agent or a broker or somebody that could spell you while you are with your family. Otherwise, you're going to be tempted to pick up this device and look at your notifications instead of paying attention to your family. If there's anything we should have learned during the COVID, it is how important our relationships are and how we have no guarantee that tomorrow will show up. I guarantee that your family holidays this year have a different cast of characters than they did the year before. So consider that and let your clients know that if they can't reach you, they could reach this agent over here. And then to be the really good sport, tell that agent you'll spell them on a day that means something to them. I find it to be interesting that in my area of the country, I'm in Charlotte, we're a big melting pot. The phone does ring on Christmas because not everybody here celebrates Christmas. So you have to make sure that somebody around you who also does not have a whole lot of connection to that day is available to answer the phones. The other caveat I'll put on here is that many of our sellers in this market don't really want to have showings on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, or the day after. So make sure that you tell your buyer clients wherever you're located if there are days that are not suitable for showings. Let's say you're in an area that's primarily celebrating Jewish holidays, that maybe Yom Kippur and the eight days of Hanukkah and Rosh Hashanah. Think about the high holy days. If they're not good for showings, tell the public. Say, hey, I'll call and ask. However, it's a high holy day. They may not be allowing showings. Often people are glad to respect what's going on. They just never connected the dots. A great realtor connects the dots, draws the boundaries, and most importantly, abides by them. Your other assignment after you tell your clients that you're taking that day off, put your phone in airplane mode, hold yourself accountable by making your technology accountable. I know it's going to be hard. You're going to actually think the world is going to burn down while your phone's off, but spoiler alert, it's not. You're very valuable, but you're not that important. Take the day off. All right, Lee Brown, how do I prepare for the little things that winter can throw at us? like frozen lock boxes. All right, this is all about having your realtor safety tool emergency kit in your vehicle. I've done videos about mine. You probably have your favorite things in your car. For me personally, I am totally cold natured almost all the time. I get in the car and cut the heated seats on, turn the heat on to high, and then about three minutes later, I'm burning up and I have to turn the air on, but that's just what happens when you're medium age, let's be honest. So in my car, I have those little hot hands. And if you have a frozen lock box, did you know that if you put your hot hands around the lock box for just a minute, it will generally undo the bearings a little bit so that it will open up. Because I don't recommend that you take lighters and matches with you. And I have heard of realtors that want to hold a little tiny fire in their hands to get the lock box open. Please don't do that. It is not your lock box nor yet your front door, but those little hot hands will do a great job and you can buy them in bulk at your local outdoors kind of a store. I find them at the gas station up on the counter and if you're near a Bucky's, you lucky, lucky dogs, Bucky's has them for a dollar at their cash register. So I bought several when I was in there last. The other things you wanna be prepared for, have a towel in your car at all times because if you have to walk into some snow and ice, you could then wipe your feet off before you go into someone's home because they may not have thought to have a towel or a doormat there for you. But you could also be the smart one who kicks your shoes off outside the house. But I get it. If it's actively raining, hailing, sleeting, and snowing, you'd rather have your shoes on. Just remember you're walking into someone else's sanctuary. That's their home, which also means if you're a realtor who's trying to prepare your clients for winter, have your sellers put a towel by the door for other people to set their shoes on. They can wipe their feet off and they're not going to drag mess through all out the house. Now, thinking back about how else you prepare yourself for little things, think about what you're professionally dressed in. I don't really recommend a perfect suit or perfect dresses in the winter, but you could still look put together without those jeans with holes in it. And do we really have to have that conversation again? But anyway, buy some pants, wear some cute little boots that are flats with some little traction on the bottom and be smart. It is so important for you to show your clients that you are prepared for all things because remember, it might be winter, but you're still responsible for material facts and you're gonna to have to walk around that house and look for cracks in the foundation and other items like that, even though it's cold and gross outside. This is why I don't really own good shoes. I buy cheap ones at DSW. I'll buy them on sale from LL Bean because I wanna make sure that I can do my job and frankly not waste all my money. And you can also get some good galoshes or some muddy boots 
online for nothing, y'all. And I'll give you a little tip here. A really great place to buy shoes on sale is 6pm.com. If you ever heard of Zappos, 6pm is their outlet. And I got some really cute mud boots for $10 and I wear them down in my chicken house. And then when I hose them off, I can put them in the back of my car to take to showings, especially if I'm doing new construction because in North Carolina, we have red mud. When it's wet and cold, it will basically suck the boots right off of you. And if I lose my boots, I'd rather lose $10 boots. Thank you. All right. Number one, two, three. This is number four. Okay. What are some ways I can give back to my community during this time of year? Y'all know that I love seeing all the things that you're doing in your communities. And in fact, there's a whole Realtors Are Good Neighbors account on Instagram you could tag in. We have this whole program at the National Association of Realtors called the Good Neighbor Program. And frankly, when we announce those winners every year at the annual convention in November, I feel like the biggest slacker who ever lived when I see how much other realtors are doing. But don't let that slow you down. Just think about how inspirational that could be. So some of the best ways to give back, of course, have to do with the weather. We just talked about cold days and what it means to your business. It also means that our homeless neighbors are having a rougher time. It means that there are resources that are just not really enough in some parts of the country. So maybe you could collect some socks. Reach out to your client base and see if they are cleaning out their winter coats because they got one out of the hall closet and said, oh my goodness, these children have grown and offer to take those bigger coats. Well, take the smaller coats. Let them keep the bigger coats. Take the smaller coats and figure out where they're needed in your community. Where I am in Cabarrus County, we know that the battered women's shelter really can always use coats of any size. So we love to take up off-cast coats that are in good condition, and then they'll either sell them at their thrift store or give it to families who are coming in times of crisis. The other ways you can give back to your community are pretty easy and simple. Maybe just tell your neighbors what's going on when there's a Christmas tree light and advertise that when you see an opportunity for a community song caroling event, whatever it is. Tell your neighbors because maybe they are looking for a little bit of holiday cheer and you could be the one that tells them about it. I've also seen some really smart realtors who will go out and find the really good houses with Christmas lights on them and put that on their Instagram page. Maybe you could write a whole blog post about the best Christmas lights and then go out and drive around. That actually is giving back to your community in ways that are non-monetary. And if you do have some extra funds to give, reach out to the places that are feeding people, the Salvation Army, the homeless shelters, any of your food crisis opportunities and just see what you can do. As a realtor, you have access to more people than the rest of the public does because you have a past client base. Whatever you do, bring them into it as well because you'll be really honored to see that they're grateful that you've shown them a way to give back. And the last thing I would tell you about that, just make sure it's something that matters to you. People know when you're doing something, your heart's not in it, but when they can tell you care, they are more driven to dial right in and do it with you. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully those little tips will help you throughout your upcoming week. If you need me, you know where to find me. And until then, hit the bell to subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.